The Australian Terrier also shares a similar ancestry, as their makeup is that of British Terriers of the 1800s, culminating into the Rough Terrier, and further refined into the Australian Terrier during that country's pioneering age. They are a sturdy working terrier, medium boned, 10 to 11 inches in height, and generally around 12 to 14 pounds. They have a longer muzzle with powerful jaws and a proportionally long body. They have a double coat that is shorter in length featuring a distinctive ruff and apron. The Gaffan family has raised the number one and number two Australian Terriers in the country. Let's travel to Dunham Lake to hear their experiences with this rough and tumble terrier. I'd say that the Aussie, a good description is they're, they're, they're self-confident, they're alert, they're highly trainable, they're very loyal, they can be stubborn. If they want something, they, they stay on it until they accomplish their task. Very family oriented. We were living in the city and Ellie, my daughter Ellie, my co-breeder, uh, decided that she would like to show a dog. And so we started our research. We knew we were moving to the country and we had never seen an Australian Terrier. Went on an exploration to find one and it was not easy to find one. Yeah, they're really fun. They all have their own personalities and it's fun to watch all of them. They're native to Australia. First, they were called a rough-coated terrier. They were one of the first breeds to be a house pet. They would be brought in the house and they were put on the children's beds to keep their feet warm at night. They really are a sturdy dog. They're not a, a foo-foo dog. It's, they protected the family from snakes. Their hearing is exceptional and they will and wait patiently even if it's all day and then they'll grab it and just shake it and it's, it's done and they're very proud of their, of their accomplishment for the day. I would say like a family with kids and you know they are very active so they need something to do and I think kids are, they really need to be it with a family. If you're a family or someone that is, you know, works 10 hour days and can't come home to watch them or take care of them, that would not be a good fit for an Australian Terrier. They really love being with their people. On a nice day, they'd much rather be outside and with you. If, if you're outside, they want to be outside with you. They like to be with you, near you. Some really like to be on our lap and sleep in our beds. But for the most part, they like to be next to you, touching you somewhere on your, by your feet, as I've got three down here by our feet or up here on the couch. Hi, Tom. What do you see here? Where do you want to go? In the pile? There's not much room there. There's no room. <laughs> as with the Silky, these terriers are lesser known and often misidentified. The breed still isn't very well recognized. A lot of people will see them and ask if it's a, a Yorkie or what kind of breed, what kind of mixed breed it is. Not in the whole almost 16 years that I had Bailey did I ever meet another person that even knew what he was. Like we would go for walks. When we'd come up to somebody, most everybody accused me of having an overgrown Yorkie. They're, they're called rough coated because they've got, as I said, they've got texture and it, it should be Horse. Yeah, there are three varieties. There's a blue tan, and there's a red, and then there's sandy, and sandy is very rare. The standard is 10 to 11 inches in height and 1 to 1 and a half inches longer from their height. So if you're speaking about the muzzle, the length of the muzzle, so from the nose to the stop in between the eyes, should be the equal distance between the stop and the top of the skull. It's called nose leather, and the, the, the deeper, the wider, the longer, the better. The under jaw is, um, I think, more of an identifier of strength of bite. His tail is, according to the AKC, is supposed to be docked. When I found Teresa, um, she told me that he was not going to be docked. I almost didn't get him. 
we've decided as a family and as joint breeders, my daughters and I, that um, we are no longer docking, and that's a, a real passion of mine. I've done a lot of research over the last couple of years regarding that. Dogs in Europe expand. Australia, where the breed was originated and our standard was formed, no longer dock. To me, I was thinking that is going to be the weirdest looking dog I've ever seen. I went to visit him at six weeks old, and I saw that little tail, and it's so expressive and so happy. Well, Australian Terriers are so happy. It's just one of his ways of expressing his happiness. The Aussies' unique qualities endear themselves to their loyalists, who go to no ends to show their love for these unique pooches. Well, a couple years ago I wrote this book with the help of my daughters, and it also came at, the, at a time when I had a family that was on my waiting list, and they wanted a puppy. And um, I didn't have a puppy at that time, but we knew that the boy would be getting a puppy from me in, in a few months to come. But Christmas was around the corner, and that's when they wanted to, to present him with the gift. And so I made, I, I finished my book. It inspired me to complete it. It was just, it was just a fun, fun thing to do. See, I have found my forever breed. I will always have an Aussie. They're so like little people that um, it's hard to sometimes remember that he's a dog. <laughs> Monica Strauss is an Aussie super fan, and Archer, raised by the Gaffons, is her best pal. I'm one of those people that I've always been an animal lover, and my parents actually owned a pet store when I was growing up. And I just happened to be shopping one day, and I stopped at the puppy store, and there was this one little dog there, I don't know, he just looks so pitiful and scared and everything like that. I just, I knew I had to take him home. And he was my best friend. We just like instantly bonded and he went everywhere and did everything with me. And then after I lost him, I knew that I had to have another one. Their personalities are just so huge. Archer, he is a mom's boy. He's never left outside without his mom. I don't even think he would stay outside if mom wasn't outside. <laughs> he really needs to be wherever mom is. I have been told that, you know, he kind of like looks for where mom is and waits for mom. He just goes bananas. He's very excited to see me. It's, it's awesome. He's very active. Like I said, we go biking, we go hiking, we kayak. We took a road trip. It was just me and the two dogs, his big brother and Archer and we stopped at every little tourist attraction. We saw the world's largest prairie chicken. It is now his, he marked it, it's his. <laughs> Last summer, um, he went hiking in Glacier National Park. This is actually his second time. He literally sleeps right here, and we're nose to nose, and he shares my pillow with me. So every morning when my alarm goes off, I get these little smooches on my face to wake up. I show Archer, that's just one of our hobbies that we do. I have a baby book. I've kept every single show since his very first puppy show when he was a baby. We have all his ribbons. I'm a very proud mom. I'm on an Aussie Facebook page. <laughs> I have an Aussie t-shirt. Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. When I met my husband, I had asked him if he wanted to go to a, a, a pet expo. And I'm standing in line at this t-shirt maker because I was going to have a picture of Bailey put on a t-shirt. And I knew this guy was for me and I was going to marry him because he did not make fun of me. <laughs> I stood in line, he stood in line the whole time. I got a t-shirt made with my dog's face on it. I put it on, not once did he snicker at me or anything like that, so I knew he understood. So what antics inspire this level of fanfare for these rowdy pups? Bye. Yeah, did you hear what happened to Dad? He was walking down to the garden one day and he saw he heard this loud noise and he was like, what is that? And a mom bear running away. Nobody's getting my house without me knowing it. He goes outside and his nose is to the ground, like who was in my yard? We have like um, 
you know, where you can go through the kitchen and the dining room and the living room. So yeah. like an open area and he just, it's like a racetrack. <laughs> oh yeah, frog legs. Yep, yeah, where he like, his front feet are like this and his back legs are this. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, they, they, they do kick their legs back and when they lay on their tummy, they'll sit like this all around and then if I have to get up to get something, then they all have to follow me wherever I go. He goes literally everywhere I go. So if I'm in the living room and I need to go to the kitchen, even if I'm going to be back in two seconds, he goes to the kitchen with me. And, you know, it's you're kind of like the Pied Piper of the Australian Terriers. <laughs> They like being outside in the winter. He loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Like when we first um, open that door, he is like just boom, 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 and then he'll get like stuck in the middle of the yard and they'll be like, Mom, come get me. Yeah, he goes full bore right into the snow. He loves it. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, right, this is really cold. <laughs> the Aussies love to play fetch. So bring the ball back, we, we can play fetch a long time. Yeah. But the thing that I notice about what I think is a little bit more characteristic to the Australian Terriers is that it's like they're so excited to see you and they can hardly control themselves. So they have to find a toy somewhere, put it in their mouth, and then they talk with it in their mouth while they're wiggling their body and greet you. They're fun, they're always entertaining. Oh. They get along great with other dogs. You can take them anywhere. They don't shed, so there's not a lot of that issue. They're, they're a good size. Is it a breed for everyone? I, I don't know, but for us, it's absolutely, it's the right breed for us. She won't retrieve it either. She's like, it's mine. <laughs> she doesn't know what that camera is. <laughs> You're pointing that thing at her, and it's like, oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> My Yorkie is intense, but super, super affectionate. But he, he's definitely got a little evil in him. <laughs> or if she sees the grass is a little wet, she will not go out. <laughs> yeah, anybody asked me to see my kid flip, 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 flip